Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Wednesday, November 23rd. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The game against Michigan in Tony Gerdeman, three days. This will, uh, we just wrapped up on Tuesday afternoon, our last opportunity to talk to the Buckeyes. Michigan week always works a little differently than a normal week. Mm. Normally we do Ryan Day and maybe Jim Knowles on a Tuesday, and then we talk to the players on a Wednesday, and then we have a Zoom with Ryan Day on Thursday. Michigan week, nope, you get everyone, you get Ryan Day, we get mm. seven players on Tuesday. That's it, the next time we will see Ryan Day's smiling face will be Saturday morning inside Ohio Stadium. Uh, I guess there was there was a bunch of interesting stuff to talk about, uh, unsurprisingly, yes. in, a, in, a, in a week with a game of this much consequence. I, I guess let's start with just last year's game. This feels like, to me at least, maybe the most consequential. You know how every every election cycle you have all the talking heads on TV saying, this is the most consequential, most important election? Okay. Uh, sometimes they just need TV ratings. Tony, this feels like the most important Ohio State-Michigan game in quite a while in terms of shaping the future of this rivalry and both of these programs, maybe since at least 2016 and maybe before that. Yes, it's like Jim Harbaugh's arrival and um, you know going to take over the the rivalry. But yeah, this is this is an opportunity for Michigan to win two in a row, and not just win two in a row, but not have lost since you know 2019. And you have so many players on this team who have never beaten Michigan, which is not which is something we've been able to say about like the sophomore class <laughs> or freshmen. These freshmen have never beaten Michigan. Well, they have they haven't played them yet, but like. You go to Zach Harrison, senior class. They're the last class to have a win over Michigan. So that's that in itself is like a wow thing. And then if you were to compound that with a senior class never getting a win over Michigan, that is something that uh, you have to go back decades to say that, uh, 25 years almost to say that about Ohio State, uh, over 25 years, um, you know, so that's not something that is going to would sit well with anybody at Ohio State, and certainly the senior class. So, yeah, this is an, it's also an opportunity to just shut down the label that mm-hmm. this program has been given. Yeah, and that, that label is soft. That label is not tough. And, you know, there that was something that, you know, that's one of those things that gets thrown around on Twitter mm-hmm. then, and everyone kind of, you know, whatever. But... When it gets thrown around by the opposing team's offensive coordinator, as it did with Josh Gaddis in Michigan after last year's game, that's like, okay, that maybe stings a little bit more. You have heard, you know, Ryan Day preaches toughness. There's, uh, you know, the banner on that side of the building says fight. The banner on that side of the building says tough love. Toughness has been, you know, sort of the watchword this season. It feels like, you know, he, Ryan Day was asked about whether whether he feels his team is tough enough, you know, has, has really lived up to that. Boy, this feels like this is going to be a real measuring stick in terms of, okay, you just spent the last year talking about how tough, how you're going to be so tough, and you saw all the videos of the mat drills, mm-hmm. and Coach Mick is going to toughen this team up and all that stuff. Saturday, if we find out if they actually meant it or if it was just kind of empty talk. Yeah, I think it was Ryan Day said there's no hiding from this. There's no hiding from the result. And as Urban Meyer always used to say, it's a results-oriented business. And so it'll be out there for everyone to see one way or another. And it's, it's, it's affirmation or it's a realization that, well, that we did not do what we thought we were going to do, and now we have to do something else. And we have to fix it because they thought they fixed it. After every season, Ryan Day believes he has fixed something. And uh, they believe they have fixed the issues uh, that um, you know were at hand last year, getting beat on the line of scrimmage. And as I think back to being in Ann Arbor when Jim Harbaugh was talking about his happy warriors, uh, did you did you see many happy warriors out there today? No, there was there, there was not. I don't know that I really saw many smiles. I don't think anyone said the word happy that I heard. Uh, and that's that's the difference between a team that is coming off of a win and a comic team that is coming off of a loss. Mm-hmm. Because if you have if you're coming off a loss, well now you've really got something to prove and. There were a bunch of guys, including Kate Stover, were asked, you know, what was it like to come off of last year's game? And um, he was talking very quietly, so I couldn't hear everything. But uh, I heard the first word he said, which was sucks. And he uh, was asked a similar question later and said the same first word. And I heard someone else at some point saying the same thing. And, yeah, I I bet life as an Ohio State football player is not nearly as fun if you don't have that game to win, to lean on. And it felt like for, you know, for a decade it was sort of taken as, like, this is just like, yes, well, of course they will beat Michigan because this is what they do every year, and that's just sort of a given. 
now that it's not a given, boy, this this game feels like it sure is important for them to win. Well, and I saw a couple of players asked if um, you know you you thought you knew about the rivalry, but did you know? Did, can you can you really truly appreciate it until you lose it and until you lose a game in it? And I don't you know no no good answers came from that, but I think you can you can still appreciate it by winning it clearly. But when you continue to win it and win it, and it becomes something where, you know, you uh, you're getting fitted for your gold pants and like on a recruiting trip, mm -hmm. you know, then it's like, the, the things can start to turn on you. And I'm not saying that's what happened at Ohio State, but it just it did become, just an assumption, mm -hmm. and now it, it no longer is. And you see the um, the not angst, but there is a desire there that may not have been there before, where it's like. You thought you were supposed to have desire, so you did. But then you lose it, and now you really have mm -hmm. desire. So I asked uh, Emeka uh, Abuka, we talked to him, and I said, you know, you came from Washington. What did you think you knew about the rivalry? And then when did you learn that you didn't know once you played in it? And he said, you know, I came from Washington. I didn't know anything really about it. Then they're recruiting you, and they're telling you about it, and you think you know about it. But then you, you can't really know about it until you've played in it or you've lost in it. And now that he has lost in it, like there was, there was not a smile there. There was, there was just motivation. And Ronnie Hickman, who is this will be his last home game at Ohio State, and uh, somebody asked, so is that more motivation to beat Michigan to go out on a high note? And he said, last year's loss is all the motivation he needs. Yeah, and you know both of those guys are from a good distance away. Hickman from New Jersey. Uh, Abuka from Washington, Hickman, in case you're wondering, wait a minute, wasn't he a redshirt junior? Yes, he's, he is walking on senior day. He is, you know, basically already decided this is going to be his last season at Ohio State, move on to the NFL. Uh, but Zach Harrison, he is not from New Jersey. He's not from Washington. He's from, he grew up, went to high school in Lewis Center, Ohio, just north of Columbus. He is a central Ohio kid through and through. Talked about, you know, his parents weren't huge football fans, but going and watching the game with friends at their houses and all that kind of stuff. Even he said, you know, you watched it growing up. You, you knew, you thought you knew, and you, you, you know, he was there in 2019 when they played up in Ann Arbor. But he said, even until last year when he was really playing in it, you didn't really understand how physical this game is. And you know, now they've, you know, this is the everyone's got a plan until they get punched mm -hmm. in the mouth. Well, Ohio State got punched in the mouth, and they didn't have a plan last year. Now we find out if they've got a plan this year. Part of that plan is, hey, they have a new defensive coordinator. Let's, I mean, no one has directly said as a direct result of what happened last year in Ann Arbor, but um, sources indicate as a direct result of what happened last year in Ann Arbor. Uh, you know, what is, what, you know, how did you, what does Jim Knowles think about going into his first Ohio State Michigan game? I mean, he, you know, they, Cornell played Penn, so he's ready for this, right? Well, yeah, he actually laughed when somebody brought up a Cornell rivalry game and uh, Someone's, Colgate? Yeah, Col Col uh, yes, Colgate, which he said, yeah, come on, yeah, come it's Pan. They play, they play Pan every year on Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, yeah. yeah. So, But he has been part of uh, Bedlam at Oklahoma State, been part of the Egg Bowl, and he said, this is this is just different. You you take all of those and, what, what do you say, a thousand times, ten times, mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly the, the multiplier, but considerably more. But he did say there's a thread that goes throughout every rivalry, and it's, it's a, you know, you don't want to lose as much as you want to win. And... Uh, Everything, <laughs> every waking moment basically is he spends on, uh, you know, thinking about this game, and how to impact it, and how to um, have his defense. You know, as he said, he wants his defense to play offense, and so he's trying to figure out every waking hour, like I said, how to impact this game, how to stop this offense, what can be done that he can do more, and I'm sure there's lots of um, sleep being missed, especially based off what the defense did against Maryland. Yeah, and Ryan Day was asked, so, you know, what, what is this week like? How much are you sleeping? He's like, not much. He's like, well, yeah, but you put a number on it, not much. He's like, all right, well, I guess that's that doesn't answer the question, but also does answer the question all at once. Uh, one of the other questions that uh, we got a pretty definitive answer on was uh, the status of Blake Corum. You know, how does, you know, we were up in Michigan on uh, Monday and got the yeah, no, maybe no update, and then got the Ryan Hayes answer about how, you know, he's out, but was he, you know, was it a hypothetical? Mm -hmm. So the status of Blake Corum still certainly up in the air, and I remember asking Ryan Day about this before the Penn State game in 2019, because they had, uh, I think it was Noah Kane and one of their other running backs was out, and yeah. that game he just said, he, he, he's playing. It was like it was. It was like yeah. I asked the question. It was like he didn't. He didn't answer. He's like, well, he's playing. I don't think he ended up playing in that game. But you know, they have to prepare as if he's playing. 
even if they're pretty sure he's not or he's going to be compromised physically compromised in while well, he's playing they have to prepare as if they're getting 100% of Blake Corum 100% of the time directly in their faces Jim Knowles was asked hey how much uh, are, are you how much investigation are you doing like how are you are you digging into to all of your sources to see if Blake Corum is going to be playing he's like I'm not we're not spending any time doing any investigation kind of like uh, Urban Meyer in 2017 after the Michigan game but they're not spending any time in that. You just expect him to play. And, and, and if you're wrong, I don't think you're going to be upset. <laughs> so you just go in. And I do think there are some – You do. I, I do think you have to consider the fact that he, he's playing, but he's not the same guy. So, you know, do you expect the same thing? And if, and if you don't, are you setting yourself up to, to be burned? Well, and the question is, okay, if it's not the same thing, is it because it's Blake Corum a little bit, but then it's Donovan Edwards. Donovan Edwards has also been, he's had mm -hmm. a hand thing. It sounds like they're probably expecting Donovan Edwards to play. But, you know, if it's Donovan Edwards instead of Blake Corum, how does that change the offense? Edwards is, I always think of Edwards as more of a passing threat, but, you know, obviously can run the ball well as well. Or does that mean that if you're not expecting, you know, if you don't have Blake Corum and, you know, Edwards is compromised in some way, that this, you know, that forces them to run a completely different offense and it's a lot more J.J. McCarthy centric, whether it's running the ball or throwing the ball downfield, whatever it is, you know, and, and J.J. McCarthy was a big uh, topic of conversation as well because they have not faced a running quarterback, like a true running quarterback. They, they got the, the wildcat thing against Northwestern and uh, Talia Tungavaloa ran a little bit last week, but they haven't really faced a running quarterback since the uh, Toledo game earlier in the year in Daquan Finn. You know, it, it sounded like the defense is, they want to be aggressive, but they know they can't be too aggressive yeah. in trying to stop him. Yeah, and that's a hard line to follow when this is a, a defense that you want to be aggressive. And I, I assume this is one of those, some of those uh, baked in big plays where the, you, you know the quarterback is going to get out at times. But as Jim Knoll said, you you devise some things, and I'm not going to get too technical with you here. Basically, what he told us, and but you do some things, and then it just comes down to your athletes making the play on their athlete. And if you have one or two guys, whether it's a spy or somebody that comes off, like you've got to be able to tackle him, because a lot of this defense is there's one line left, like you know, Ronnie Hickman being the last line of defense. Like somebody else is going to be the last line of defense against what could be a seven yard run versus a 27 yard run and you have to make that tackle. And uh, you know, I asked Tommy Eichenberg, how, how does that mobility affect you? And he's like, yeah, it does. And that was about the extent of the answer. <laughs> you, you just have to be, you, you have to be more cautious, but you can't be cautious. And it's it, it's uh, the, the dichotomy of the, the two of them don't mix, but that's why that's why it's so difficult to defend a quarterback who can run and throw because it does not go together. And that's going to be one of the one of the challenges Ohio State faces this Saturday. One of the big questions they're going to face this Saturday as well, uh, along with the health of Blake Corum, the health of Ohio State's running backs, the health of Jackson Smith and Jigba, the health of Matt Jones. Matt Jones, mm -hmm. there was the, you know, Ryan Day was asked about the health of Matt Jones and who would step in if Matt Jones couldn't go, and it was kind of yeah, mumble mumble, voice trails off. They'll see how Matt Jones does this week. Uh, Enoch Famahi was the guy who came in. Uh, Josh Fryer has played some yeah. guard, some tackle, some tight end, so, you know, maybe. So, yeah, it was not a, not a day rich with, like, direct answers, which is sort of <laughs> what you expect during Michigan Week from both sides of the rivalry, and we were not disappointed. No. So, uh, but there will be plenty more, uh, plenty more to come during this Ohio State-Michigan Week from us. We'll try and get you as many actual answers as we can. Uh, Tony and I will be doing uh, approximately 3 million Buckeye Weekly uh, podcast episodes between now and Saturday. We have uh, a bunch of listener questions to talk about. We're going to talk about... What does it take for Ohio State to win this game? What does it take for Michigan to win this game? All sorts of different stuff. Uh, maybe even a little special bonus live episode Friday with a little, you know, old school TV team coverage. We'll see if we can pull that off. We, of course, have the Tuesday night uh, college football playoff ranking show we got coming on at 7 o'clock on Tuesday night live at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. And, of course, just sign up at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Yeah. Like, what do I what do I have to do to get you into this website today? Uh, fantastic team coverage. It's going to be a huge recruiting week. Uh, Alex Gleitman and Mark Givler 
just dominating the recruiting world right now uh, with a huge busy weekend coming into Ohio Stadium. Uh, our full team of X's and O's gurus, Ross Fulton and Justin Whitlatch and Devin Radcliffe, and just a fantastic group of guys all really breaking everything down. And of course, Kevin Tony and I on team coverage. It's going to be a big week. You should spend that week at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Sign up today. It's less than 50 cents a day. What are you waiting for? Sign up today. That'll do it, Tony. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.